today's video, we're going to be taking a big look here at the tropics where we do have Hurricane Tammy now, as anticipated in yesterday's video. We expected it to occur a little bit earlier than predicted, and sure enough, that is what took place. We do have a pretty active upcoming pattern with a big cooldown for the very end of October now possible, so we'll talk about that. And then we're going to be taking a long range look at the upcoming winter, or at least at December and January, where more cold seems to be on the way in the east than originally anticipated. Certainly a lot to go over. Before we get into things, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and pinned comment down below where we did just release our third official winter forecast in there for early access. So you'll instantly gain access to that weekly consulting calls and other consulting services only for $5 a month. Again, it's in the description and pinned comment down below. I highly, highly recommend it. Now let's get into things and as we take a look at the tropics, we see of course Hurricane Tammy now at a 991 millibar low pressure center and 75 mile per hour sustained winds. We could see just to the west of this one, we also have disturbance number one with a 10% chance of development over the next 48 hours and a 20% chance overall over the next seven days. I do not expect this one to develop only because it's so far south and it is heading kind of in a westward direction towards land in a hurry so the window for opportunity for this one is very low and the area it's in is just not very favorable historically so those are two things going against this one we will take a look at it as long as it's a disturbance but that is my current thoughts for that one let's get into the cone forecast for tammy and as you can see it's expected to just remain a hurricane through its track through the next seven or so days um you can also note that we have lots and lots of hurricane warnings up for some of those eastern caribbean areas so that is certainly gonna be impactful for these islands they're not going to bring much impact to the storm as this is not big areas of land so it's just small little areas that'll feel the brunt of it the wind the the rain and it's not really going to weaken the storm like puerto rico dominican republic or haiti would or cuba of course this is a much smaller landmass we're talking about and should have minimal impact on the storm overall. As of now, we do not expect this one to reach major hurricane status. We will keep you up to date on all of that. We do expect an eastward curve to occur around Monday time frame. As you can see, it'll be aiming almost directly northward by 8 a.m. on Monday. And by 8 a.m. on Tuesday, it should be in a northeasterly trajectory towards the very far east of Bermuda and should not bring any more land impacts. Of course, anything is possible in weather and we will continue to keep you guys up to date with this one, of course. Now let's get into the upcoming pattern. We do have a lot of storminess on the way for tonight into tomorrow in the eastern states. By the time we're reaching Saturday, uh, we can see that there is gonna be this major nor'easter approaching New England here, as you can see. So a 982 at this point, bringing lots of wind and lots of rainfall to the northeast here. Let's just keep going. And as we reach into Sunday time frame, Sunday afternoon, we can see this one will weaken down to a 996, although that's not very weak. It is weak for this one. And we can see lots of storms here over the northwest. So certainly this is causing some pretty big impacts. It is a quieter pattern outside of that though. And even Monday, the 23rd here is looking rather quiet. As we keep going, we can see storminess building in these middle portions of the states, especially the South Central and then the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. We have lots of thunderstorms and lots of heavy rainfall developing between two air masses. The jet stream at this point is looking rather flat, mostly a ridge here in the east. So we have this warmer air and then we have this kind of colder air dipping down. And you can tell that a lot of this storminess is happening in between these two air masses, which is a pretty common occurrence. That is what we're seeing take place here. And then near normal conditions for the most part over the West. Now let's just keep going. I want to take this towards Thursday time frame. That's going to be the 26th here. And we can see a lot of precipitation again happening between the right around the jet stream. Actually, matter of fact, we still have some moisture heading in through the South Central states, but really it's a quieter pattern. Things get a lot more active by the time we're reaching Friday, the 27th here. We have a thousand and three millibar low pressure center. And this is featuring a little bit of a frontal boundary, both warm and cold fronts. And then we still have this jet stream bringing some storminess around. We have heavier snowfall here for kind of the south central of Canada and then for the Rockies here in the United States by Friday. Saturday, we can see this all kind of slips eastward a lot quicker than originally anticipated. So snowfall might be a lot more minimalistic than we originally anticipated. Instead of this jet stream dipping into a trough in the west and seeing a storm track like this, 
Uh, I'm gonna draw in a different color here. We'll do it in yellow just so we can see the difference. We see that the jet stream is kind of ridging over the west and then it's moving northward to this point. So this really changes uh, the, the look here. And we can see way less snowfall as a result of that recent change in the model run. Uh, we do have a 996 here over Eastern Canada with this cold front swinging underneath, warm front up here. And this is gonna allow for cold air to actually move eastward here. This is again, Octo uh, October 28th. By October 29th, we see even more cold air pu pushing in as we have this strong 982 millibar low pressure center, bringing a very, very decent cold front here. And this cold is able to just unleash into the east on this particular model run. And then we see warmth building out west, which is gonna be more of a positive PNA look. So let's keep going and we have one more day here. This is gonna be for Monday the 30th. And as you can see again, large ridge out west, trough in the east here. And this is gonna bring the coldest air of the season if it occurs this way. Precipitation along that southeast coast for sure. And then again, more of a positive PNA look where this warm bubble is causing the cold to move around and down south into the east. Very classic stuff and already what we've been dealing with for quite a while. Now, the total precipitation here is looking a little bit more subsided. We can see the northwest still expecting quite a bit. These in-between areas where we have that kind of conflict of the air masses is still expecting a lot as well. And then the northeast, I'm separating this even though it's touching that central area, but we can see that this is mostly going to be a, a result of that nor'easter that comes pretty early in the pattern. We will get some more precipitation later on that helps out, but this is the most active area, I would say, over the next 10 days. Total snowfall here, like I said, very much so subsided, and we've actually seen all of that major snowfall kind of just slide northward, where now it's north of that Canadian-U.S. border, and that is where we still expect to see 10 to 20, even 20 inches plus for some of those mountaintops up there. We still do expect to see some 10 inch plus amounts for some of the mountaintops in Wyoming and Montana. And I'd say the biggest changes are for Utah and Colorado, and then the plains here where we see a lot less. But note that we, we do get some snowfall in very minimalistic amounts here for some of the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. That is a sign of the times. And we are seeing all of this kind of shift eastward, but we are starting to see some flakes flying for this area, which I would say is very, very exciting. Now, the temperature pattern that is upcoming, we can see things are a little bit warmer in the east than they were. We do get a little bit more of a cool down moving in for Sunday into Monday, and this will last kind of through into Tuesday as well for some of the east coast areas, even Wednesday. But what we see overall trending in is this warmer pattern in the east as we reach into uh, kind of late next week. This is by Friday the 27th here, and we can see some pretty far above normal temperatures here in the eastern states trending in. Like I alluded to earlier, we do not expect this to stick around too long, though, because this is going to give way to a bigger cooldown. Uh, so again, the warm up here surging, but this is actually the cooldown that was going to move into the west. Now it's going to slide over this positive PNA right here. So again, this is like a warm bubble. It's going to slide over top of that and actually move into the east. So let's watch that occur. Watch this take place, and as you can see, it just slides over that warm air that's set up over the west, and this just continues to prevail here. Again, positive PNA, that's the main driving force here that we're taking a look at. And then this cold air is just moving eastward. Uh, here's your frontal boundary where we have some warmth and cold, but by the time we're reaching kind of the 30th, 31st, that's going to be Sunday to Monday of next weekend, we can see cold air prevailing in the east once again. Take this with a grain of salt, it is pretty far out, but that is what the models are suggesting at this point. Now, as promised, let's just dive into the upcoming long range pattern. First off, for November, we do expect this positive PNA pattern to kind of continue here. So as you can see, warmer air overall for the west, and then colder air moving down southward into the east. By December, you can see things are changing a little bit. We do have some of the southeast being influenced by some warmth. And if you've ever paid attention to some of our prestige weather stuff that we put out, my partner Brendan has talked a lot about how December could be a slower start to the winter time. We could see some warmth around for December and winter really gets started in January and February this year, according to our long range and historical thoughts here. We can see a little bit more of a positive PNA look and you could tell cold air is probably sliding into the Midwest and Plains as well as the northeast at times, so we see that as well. But this southeast ridge is making an appearance here in December. Big changes though for January, 
We see things cooling down a little bit here in the West, but you do see some signs at warmth. Kind of a neutral PA, if anything. But we do see overall cold air for a lot of the East here. So I'm going to draw some negatives in here. And that is where we're, we are seeing some colder air prevail now during January. Certainly something to pay attention to. Definitely more in line with what our long range winter projects and projections are at this point. And it's going to be interesting to track over the coming month with you guys, or coming months, I should say. But keep in mind, like I said earlier, our third winter forecast, our updated edition of that winter forecast, is available in Prestige Weather for a week or two early. Uh, we will be releasing that on the channel here within the coming weeks. But if you want early access to that, it is in the pinned comment and description down below. Again, only five bucks a month. Anyway, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.